the following video, we're going to examine the greater than inequalities when dealing with absolute values. If you are dealing with the absolute value of an expression is greater than a number or absolute value of expression is greater than or equal to a number, you are now dealing with your or compound inequalities. And so the solution will be the area on the outside of the two solutions. So the trick for knowing when to use an or compound inequality with absolute value is greater than, we mispronounce the word great or. So that tells me I use an or compound inequality. So let's examine how we create our or compound inequality from an absolute value. If we have the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than 7, that means our distance of this expression is greater than seven units from zero. So the two numbers we have that are seven units away from zero are either seven, so here's zero, or negative seven. Now if we're greater than seven units away, that means we're over in this region. And if we go towards negative seven, to be greater than seven units away means you're further away. So it's this region. So if we were to look at this and examine this, our variable expression on the right side starts at 7 and goes to the right. So the first expression we have is x plus 2 is greater than 7. That's very similar to how we deal with absolute value equations. You can have one that deals with just dropping the bars and leaving it as is. Now the other one is a little trickier. We have the or. Now this one our x plus 2 is going to relate to negative 7. And if we look, it goes to the left to make it further and further away from 0. And so x plus 2 is less than negative 7. Now, another reason to make sense on why this inequality symbol got flipped is instead of dealing with the positive 7, you're dealing with the negative 7. That means if you deal with a negative and an inequality, you flip the inequality. So now we solve these separately. To get x by itself, we're going to subtract 2. So x is greater than 5. To get x by itself here, we're going to subtract 2. And get x is less than negative 9. So the final compound inequality we have is I'm going to do x is less than negative 9 or x is greater than 5. So that is our final compound inequality. Now let's examine how we graph that on the number line below. We're going to go ahead and do this very basic. We're going to use the same technique before. I'm going to create a negative 10. And I'm going to create a 5. So I'm going to go over. Here's negative 5. Here's 0. And we'll go ahead and create our 1, our 2, our 3, our 4, our negative 1, our negative 2, our negative 3, our negative 4, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and negative 9. So when we're dealing with this inequality, x is less than negative 9. So we have an open circle on negative 9 with the arrow to the left. And we have an open circle on 5 because x is greater than 5 going to the right. And so this is how we create our or compound inequalities from an absolute value inequality. You can think of it a variety of ways. We can look at the visual approach to it and see why one of these is going to be greater than 7 and the other one is going to be less than because you're going a further distance away from 0, negative 7. You could think of it as you can drop the bars to create the first inequality. And then since you're dealing with absolute value, you know you're going to have to deal with a negative number. And since you're dealing with a negative, you can flip the inequality symbol. So there's a variety of approaches you can use on trying to figure out how to create these two equations, these two inequalities.